How do you start the year and why? <laughs> well, um, that one is a very complicated question. Um, Matt, uh, Matt has done a ton of research. I've done a ton of research on, and so have a lot of other people, um, on why we should start it a certain way versus another way. Because there's, there's, you know, a number of different methods you could use to do it. Um, but, and I think, Matt, you should definitely jump in on this, too, because you have a, a different perspective from your mathematical uh, side that I don't. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, the one of the reasons that we chose to use the method we're using was because we cast lots. Because, at least for me, I'll speak for myself, I looked at, you know, all those calendars when I was looking at the calendar, just in general, trying to find which one to use. Then after I found the right calendar, I looked at probably at least 10 different methods, probably, probably more like 15 different methods of how to start the year. Okay. And out of those 13 methods, I compiled a list of seven that I thought were plausible possibilities. This was back in uh, 2019, at the beginning of 2019, right before the year started. And I asked Matt and Zach to look through them, and no, none of us really could come up with one that we knew for sure was right, because um, this one topic, there's not a lot of scripture that specifically tells you how to do it. So, yeah. um, so we... Uh, decided agreed after matt's experience and sharing his experience with casting lots we decided that that was the method we needed to take because we just couldn't settle on a method and we had to make a decision that year if we were going to intercalate and add a, an uncounted week between the years between the 2018 and 20 or sorry yeah 2018 and 2019 years or if we were going to um, wait it out another year before intercalation and maybe no intercalation at all because we put that on the table too and um, we all three, the first draw drew number four out of the, out of eight numbers that we put in a hat. The eighth one was for other in case none of the options that we had listed were correct. So we all drew number four. And number four just happens to match a pattern that um, I, I found a pattern in the moon that every seven years with an intercalation, uh, there's this moon flipping pattern, which I don't think we should get into be, uh, in this call super deep, but I do have, I can send you, if you wanted to post it with this video, like as a, a link in the video, I have yeah. a video where I explain the flipping pattern, but it's, it's, it's complicated to understand and it would interfere with the rest of our questions and stuff. But anyways, <laughs> it's a, a seven year pattern of flipping from full moons for three years and then new moons for three years um that uh actually seems to have some i mean it seems to work so anyways that was what the lot fell for and that meant that year we didn't intercalate we actually waited till the next year to intercalate till 2020 and you can correct me if i'm wrong on my dates matt but i think that was no case. you're right yeah it was uh at yeah, this 2019 is when you had a big alignment that a lot of other people Right. associated with uh, assigned intercalate, which was when you had the, the equinox fall on the fourth day, and there was a new moon on that day as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like you, we were going through all the alignments that we could find, and yeah, it, was, it doesn't happen often, but to me, it, it didn't trigger, it didn't have the same feel, I guess you could say, um, that we needed to intercalate, and then we and we plugged in the pattern that Michael was talking about, along with some other things. Uh, the dominoes just kind of fell into place. Yeah. And I think the biggest yeah. reason there was a question that year was because the equinox fell on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But the full moon also fell on the same day, which is one of the signs mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls um, that you're on track, basically. And so it was kind of hard to ignore that the full moon landed on that day, even though the equinox yeah, happened that day. Um, and some people believe that you need to start the day after. Um, and there's some valid reasons why, but 
we, you know, when the lot fell that way and um, the full moon happened that day, it just seemed like that's what we needed to do. So, so. Yeah, this, this question will be kind of tied into some other ones here later on, too. Right. Like, because we get in so, specifically to the issue of intercalation and, and why why we start the year the way we do. Yeah, I was yeah. going to bring that but up yeah, later. That's, that's a good way of our starting point, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. since we're on the topic so, of when it – oh, yeah, well, don't go ahead. No, I, that's fine. We can continue on because we will address what I was going to say later, so we'll just keep going. Yeah, some of the stuff y'all brought up are in the questions later. I'm trying to build up to the meatier ones and just give them a little milk it up front. <laughs> Yep. So since we're talking about the the beginning of the year, starting the year, you want to explain the difference between the equinox and the equilux and which one we should look to when starting the year? Yeah. So, so go ahead, Matt. You, you know. Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. So, yeah, the equilux or the equinox, right. to me, it's just simple. It's a super simple answer. The equinox is seen on the entire earth every or all on the same day. The equilux happens on different days of the year for different latitudes, depending on how far you are, you are away from another latitude. So, I mean, it, and it's a pretty wide range. And then there's some places uh, on Earth that don't even have an equilux. So to me, it's like, how can, how can you use that as your method when you have a clear sign that happens everywhere on Earth on the same day? Yep. So I, I, will, I will point out, too, in, in that, though, um, the equinox you can only see it for two years in a row and then you won't see it because it'll happen in the nighttime hours where mm -hmm. you're at right. so it's not really a it's not a sign that we can see with our eyes it's something that we would have to calculate and that's where i've right. kind of gotten to the understanding that the equinox, equinox or, or equinox whatever um it's not it's not a it's not a hard fast day it's it's just a sign it's just like some of these other right. things that are, uh, yep. you know, you have the end of the 364 day calendar, you have, you have the equinox or the equinox, whichever you're looking to, and you have the signs in the moon, which you know, I like to get to in a little bit, but all of those are just indicators. They're not, um, you know, it's not like we, we say, oh, well, the equinox happened, so we have to start our year. They're, right. you know, Genesis 1, you was putting the, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars for, for signs, for Moed, and for, you know, for seasons mm -hmm. for so they're not, I don't think they're like a hard kite in the ground that we have to go off with or they're, they're just simply indicators yeah. that the time is changing. Well, the one thing I will add to that is, <clears throat> uh, well, two things. One, I agree with you, and I think the equilux can be used as an earlier sign to prepare, um, mm -hmm. which I've, I've seen a couple of the calendar groups out there, you know, suggesting that you, you use the equin equilux as your, like, initial sign that it's coming and then um that gives you you kind of like your warning but i have been tracking the equinox on a board for since 20 since the spring of 2019 because i wasn't able to track it in 2018 i wasn't prepared so since the spring of 2019 so for three years i have tracked the equinox um and i've tried to do it spring and fall i've missed a couple of them but even though in a sense, you can't see it except for every couple of years. You do get on a, if you put a, a peg in a board or a bolt, I use a bolt in an old door. Um, if you, if you put a peg up, <laughs> no, it would be, well, I mean, it wouldn't be quite like that. That is a cool calendar, but no, if you have a spot that gets morning to evening sun, it doesn't yep. have to be from early sunrise, but it needs to be from like maybe 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at least. Um, if you can get earlier and later, that's even better. But anyways, if you have a place that's that's full sun all day, at least from 10 to 5, and you have a peg in a board, what you can watch is for a few um, days before and a few days after, you'll see that the... You, you you mark the tip of the, the shadow that is cast by the peg every like every hour all day long, yep. and then you put a straight straight edge across those lines, and before the equinox, the lines will make a curve one way, 
the day of the equinox, it will make a perfectly straight line. And then the day after and, and going afterwards, the line will curve the other way. Um, so if you get data, collect data from like five days, you can clearly see which day was the equinox day or the equal day and night um, because it's a straight right. line that's cast on that board. And uh, so there is a so way to measure that. Right. That, that's so, where so I would say that that's the equal month. So you're saying it's simple as simple as shadows and sticks getting the yes. equinox. <laughs> yeah, and I what? wouldn't disagree with you, Matt, that that would be the equinox, but that's the it just happens to almost always fall on the day that the world says it's the equinox. So sure, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. I mean, it's the difference between like the sun moving across the equator versus us having equal day, right. equal night. And that's where yeah. I know it's going to vary um, depending on your latitude. But um, I mean, I know that's where you have, um, I can't remember what they're called, but it's the sundial kind of like Jerry Morris had where it had the, the two hoops. And when you align that uh -huh. to um, the North Pole or the North Star, then that gives you more of an right. accurate uh -huh. representation because you're actually right. taking in your, uh, uh -huh. your, your latitude and I, into account there. Yep. I'm trying to find a and picture. Actually, of what you're talking about. I actually about. made one of those and used one of those. I think they call them an equatorial sundial. Um, yes. The problem yes. I found is it's very difficult to uh, actually line that thing up to the um, to the North Star, to Polaris, because if you do some right. research, Polaris actually makes a small circle. Everybody thinks it it's, it's stationary, but it makes a real small circle, and it's enough that I would go out at, like, midnight and sight that thing in, or maybe, like, 11 when it was really good and dark and I'd sight that thing in on the North star and then I'd go out like at three or four to check it, to make sure it was right. And it would be off. I could tell it was off. So it's you actually, I, I found I had to like aim somewhere in between, which means you're not aiming right at the star now. And it, it, it was very confusing. I actually couldn't get a very good reading on that one, but the um, people lux that the world tells us and here in like in the United States, for instance, um, it's typically like around the 17th, 16th, 17th, I think it's the 16th, um, is when the equilux is. So that's, you know, about four days before what I would call the true day of equal day and night, which is the, the straight line day, whatever day that is. Right. So, but the, that was what I was going to say on the equilux. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked there, but on the equilux, um, it's it's hard to use. It's hard to use that day because it's um, it's different in different latitudes. Um, but we can use it, like I was saying earlier, we can use it as a sign and in a, a preparation for that day. And I lost my other thought. There was three parts to that. So if I remember yeah. it, I'll bring it back up. Well, that's that's what I was getting at when I was saying I think it's just a sign. I think it's it's an indicator. Yeah. If they if they were using a, a peg in on a round or flat surface, which uh, some archaeological evidence uh -huh. proves that that's what they were doing, then it would be a little early, uh -huh. and again, it would be a sign uh, that hey, we're we're right. getting close. Yeah. 